All right, are we finally ready? Uh, I've just learned that you can put items into collections and it automatically puts them into folders, and like that's amazing. I love that. In uh, asbestos. But yes, I'm ready. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, I got a shield too. It looks cool. <laughs> yeah, that um mounted uh mounted rifle thing is it's awesome. It's awesome for the price. Like for a hundred gold, you can basically free up your hands because you don't have to hold yeah. a weapon anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so your hands are free, but I don't think it just fires by thought. I believe you technically touch it with your hand to aim it and fire, but the point is that it holds it so you can use on you so you can use your hands for other things instead of it's, making them it free. It says it does not require you to hold a weapon to to fire it. So it no longer requires hands to hold or fire. Yeah. Right, but what we, I meant we, we what I meant from a hand. story point of view is that it doesn't require you to hold on to it, but you would just aim it real quick with your hand and fire it without without affecting what you can hold in your hands. That, that looks oh. so, so silly, like reaching up your shoulder to pull the trigger. That or that or that or is just literally a shoulder cannon. I have no idea how those work. You just probably like clench your butt cheeks and that's the fire. <laughs> <laughs> like the fire yeah, um, yeah, mechanism. Yeah, for all I put the pin. Yeah, because I had to reread that oh. to make sure like, oh, so it doesn't require any hand, like, like gameplay wise, it does require a free hand. It goes, yeah, I mean, it says it doesn't require hands. Yeah. Seeing the horse, the hand Mike. is exceptionally useful for being able to use things like killing an item, or for grenades and out. stuff. I Throwing actually know some, How about a bunch of grenades? I yeah. actually know some people. I actually know there's a pretty heavy following that believe Kasatha are the best race because since they start with four, because since they have four hands, that leaves a lot of spare hands to do things with. Yep. Mm. It's actually having more than one hand is more than two hands is actually. Um, like pretty good in games like this with the uh, action and combo. That's, that's really strict. Yeah. Um. Anyway, last time on Starfinder, Junker's Delight, um, you had traveled into the car yards on the outskirts of a uh, Kevic Depot to search for the android Very Thirteen. Uh, she had mysteriously disappeared while um, she was searching for some sort of treasure on the planet of Akaton. I mean, she uh, like I said, um, seriously went, went missing and she finds out sorry, my mind's all over the place. Flipping over there. She went to the car yards. She went missing. We don't know why she went. Uh, you went there um, to try to track her down, uh, but it turns out it was Kefic mating season, so the uh, local local wildlife was in a frenzy, was in a frenzy protecting their territory. Uh, but you finally find the android um, bunkered down in a old ruined hover car. Um, but she warns you of a Thesteron Kefic that's been stalking her for a couple days. Um, this mutated Kefic, uh it's pretty tough. Knocked down Wolf, but he's fine. Um, but after you defeated the creature... Um, you rescued Verity 13 and escorted her back to Adventures in Junk. Where this is technically before your long rest, where she tells you what she was doing in the car yards and what she was searching for. And she also paid you 500 credits, gave you each a healing serum. You haven't added that to your inventory yet. I think we did that last time. Yeah, I gave mine to Wolf. So what good is for you, a, a person who can't heal, who heals halfway? <laughs> Not even worth it. Oh, Bryce, um, I mean, Mark, is, mm -hmm. does that junk junk drone require a battery, or does it, like, recharge? I'm looking it up. Um, uh, do drone. Uh, I don't know. Uh... Inventory doesn't say it requires a battery. Yeah, I assume it's just a robot. It just runs on the power of love. Yeah, it's kind of like an engineer <laughs> drone. Like, yeah, they technically don't. They just kind of last forever, I guess. Anyway, two. Oh, there was something. There was something important. I I need to ask last. I need to ask about last time that I didn't. That I didn't 
that I forgot to ask about. Sure. You said it was 200 credits for the shells. Was that 200 credits for each of us or 200 credits to be split between us? T total. Yeah, because you, you got some Kefic shells that you can sell so that's to a local market. It was each, 25 gold pieces each or, or, or credits per. Okay, which means we would each get 50 credits from it. Yep. I'm not sure if you added that or not, so... I did not that. because I didn't know if that was a whole 200 credits or if that was a, or if that was 50 credits. So I can get that added yeah. in now. I'm, yep. I'm adding that to me now. Oh, I think what you can get with that is 50 credits. I definitely had mine already added. Yep. Yeah. All right, 50 each then. I was hoping they were 200 because they actually would be able to afford new armor, but <laughs> I was like, it's probably not 200. So after getting settled down, uh, very 13. Um starts to tell you about why she was on Acton in the first place. And she goes, First of all, let me thank you once again for rescuing me. I knew I chose correctly when I picked Riddle, Riddle's agency to help me with my task. The Yusaki starts to interrupt, but Very 13 weighs her down. No, no, don't be modest. Your employees are to be commended, and you, for your management. Riddle sh shrugs with an apologetic look on her face. I shared some of this with Riddle, but I think you should you should all know why I came to Akaton. As you may know, sometimes when androids die, our mortal shells become home to a new soul. This is especially true if an android chooses to relen relinquish their soul in life, but it also occurs that the body is relatively intact. This was a case for one of my progenitors, a very eight. They were an engineer aboard the they were an engineer aboard a scientific research vessel called the Stellar Flare in the years shortly after the gap. The crew engaged in experiments to develop new sorts of power drawn from the then recently discovered Rift. They believed that technology similar to that, I'm oh, sorry, the Drift, not Rift. They believed that technology similar to that of the Drift engines could provide energy for all without the need for batteries. Unfortunately, their research ended abruptly when an accident occurred, when an accident caused them to crash, they paused for a moment. It was right here on Akaton. Very thirteen smiles as if they just solved an age-old mystery. Don't you see? If we can salvage from the technology from the Stellar Flare, we might be able to restart the research. It could change the galaxy forever. She pauses um, and waits for a response. So. Um, did they happen to patent this technology? From what I understand, the technology was never perfected or in working orders, so they can, didn't have a chance to so, patent any of it. If we find this, we can have complete legal rights over it for the next, you know, couple of decades, right? Riddle goes, do I see it? If we get a hold of this technology, we can basically sell it to the higher, highest bidder. No, no, we'll no. We'll all be we, rich. We, we, we patent it, and then we just have the rights to, to, to sell it to whoever we want for the next thing. We we rent out the ability to make things. It's 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 what my my boss would have, you know, suggested. I'm I'm not 100% sure that auction is the best idea because then it'll just then it'll just wind up in in some corporate's hands who that and become a thing only accessible to the rich. Um, yes. Furry 13 goes, friends, friends, that is not what's important now. First, we must locate the stellar flare. See, a f several months ago, I had a uh, near death exper experience. Oh, let's just say it was an incident with an airlock and a uh, McFlorbles sandwich. But <laughs> uh, regardless. Right in there. Um, it, uh, it's a very rare occurrence in androids, but I was able to access some of my progenitor's memories, and a sort of transponder chip activated within, within my, um, android shell. Apparently, when Very 8 was about to crash and knew their demise was forthcoming, they inserted this chip into themselves with the hopes that one of their future cells would be able to access it. Um, it was a beacon that led me here to Akaton. 
and more specifically, the car yards. I was able to locate Very 8's escape pod and access the, um, access the chip with hopes that it would help me find the stower flare. But that's when the, um, Kefix attacked me and I had to, had to flee. Yeah, I mean, you didn't really flee, you kind of just stayed there. But, no, no I mean, I, I know what you mean. No, I... That's like, oh no, it was quite a chase. But that big one cornered me. Wow. I should have bought a bigger uh, gun. I should have bought a bigger I, gun. Yeah, well, yeah. Can't go wrong with a bigger gun. But she reaches oh, yeah. into a pocket and pulls out a... Uh, a small um, data pad saying, but I was able to gather the information. And I was surprised that the um, transponder codes picked up a signal from the stellar flare. I thought it would have been deactivated for centuries now, but it seems to be emitting a signal. I admit it will, it will take some time for me to triangulate its location, but with some work, I think it can be done within a few hours. There is your problem. That is a data pad, not a gun. <laughs> yeah. Well, they do say that the the uh, you know the 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 light pen is mightier than the sword. She Although reached, you don't bring a sword. She to a reaches gun into a holster you know. and pulls out a gun. Oh yeah, don't don't write things down with that. That's that's. You two are odd. It's like you're not understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I, I, sh I shall work the night to try to um, tr triangulate the location of the stellar flare. But you should all you should all rest. I have a question. How how easy would it be for others to detect this signal and chase after this? Saying she says uh, the transponder signal is was uniquely coded to. Um, Receive data from the stellar flare. Unless someone knows... I don't know what the proper term will be, but, like, unless someone knows the proper, uh... uh protocol. Why pro not? Protocol, sure. Um, it is very unlikely that they would be able to pick up on the signal. Unless they just happen to walk right by it. Well, nobody's found it so far, so... I do not know how long the signal has been broadcasting for... I don't think it would have been active for all these years. The crash, well, the, the, um, on... the accident happened centuries ago. Well, you did say that they were working on technology that was trying to, you know, keep it working forever. So maybe they got a little bit of it working and put it into, like, the, the emergency signal. That's what I'm hopeful for. Yeah. However, I do know it was the cause of the explosion, but according to my, my uh, progenitor's memories, they were. They believed they were close to a solution. Well, I know. I know my way around a computer. Perhaps I may be of assistance. Say that. Would you like to? Um, would you like to help me? Well, um, she goes. We don't require a long rest. You got all your stuff. Yeah, I'm good. Say that. Yeah, if I can make it go quicker, I, yeah. I would love to. Um. Say so that will be much appreciated. So I no want uh, to do. I just leveled up computers too. So I want you to give me a computers check. <gasps> That's my best one. As you help. Don't say one. Don't say one. As you help, very thirteen to code this um. Of this data. Right. I. Ooh. Uh, I have rolled a 29 total. I rolled a 17 plus 12. That's more than enough to give her the assistance. Um, I feel I should let everyone know something right now, just, just for those who don't know. In Pathfinder and Starfinder, Nat twenties on skill checks are not auto successes, and nat ones are not auto failures. So, like, basically, the first like a not a one, not a one. You can, st if your skill is high enough, you can still succeed on a nat one Starfinder. That's, that's, that's good to know. So that's, yeah, just wasn't relevant here, but just for future re reference. 
So, yeah. that, so that's high enough where um, you think, like, she believes, like, you're just going to help her help her solve. It was going to give you a slight bonus to the roll. Uh, but you rolled mm-hmm. so high that you just basically, it's like, let's, let's figure this out. And you just, like, working together, you just speed yeah. through it. Within, like, a, a couple hours, um, you were able to triangulate. Oh, we're we're both so basically. Well that there is an awesome 80s montage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I show her my new trick of how I turn into a pile of junk. She laughs. She goes, ha ha ha. <laughs> I just learned it. Thank you. <laughs> and a little bit more expressive than that. I feel the need to ex- to just explain. The entire time Theory 13 was explaining, Wolf is just sitting there at the bar with his with his ho- with his <laughs> hand, with his finger fingers tilted and just like that concern. <laughs> Pose. <laughs> but, but anyways, I have I have something important I want I want to get done before we go to sleep tonight. Well, this is totally happening overnight. But when you wake up, you can, or before you, you really. <laughs> yeah, before you, uh, before you retire. Yeah, I'd like to do it before we get along. Before we. Before we get a long rest. Okay. Kai Jack, I need to talk to you. Um. Okay. Um. Gets gets uh out of her sleeping bag. Heads on over. Yeah. What do you need, Minionier? Well, with ne- with nearly di- with the whole nearly dying yesterday thing, I. I've become I've become hyper conscious of my own m- own mortality and the f- fact that I may not necessarily have time to do things the most traditional way. So I'm just going to I'm just going to ask you outright. Would you be my writer? Your writer or your rider? Your writer, as in as in write on as in write on my back into battle. Um, is that a thing that minions do? I believe so. But I think you have. I think you have to be a special I minion, mean, though. So I'll have to. Pr- I'll have to promote you to chief executive president minion. I'm getting a promotion. <sighs> do, uh, do I get health benefits? You know what? We can work that out yeah. later. Yes. I mean, yes. I does, accept does me, <laughs> does, does does me beating up anyone that threatens your health count as a benefit? I I think so. Yes. That's that's uh, actually what I have in my current plan, but not. You know, I got a you know out of pocket expenses and everything like that. So this is even better. Yes, I shall be your rider, and maybe your writer maybe if you if you need. You know, you can't hold the pencil because it's really small. Okay, so I should explain the bond between the bond between dragon writer is considered is considered somewhat sacred. Not something not something to usually rush into, but like I said, brush with death, making me make me considering that I shouldn't necessarily wait. Long time. So, if you if you accept, I it will unlock new power in both of us. And in addition, I have a gift for you. I like gifts. I am ex- At this point, I am prepared to accept the responsibility of r- riding you into battle. So Wolf summons his claws and holds one of his hand, and holds one of them behind behind his neck, like closes his eyes and and cuts off a single scale and then just like ow, 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 ow. okay that hurt way more than I thought it was going to. Uh, you gotta rip it off fast. It's like a bandage. But he did, his claws disappear then and he and he holds the he holds the scale out to Kaijack. This is one of my own scales. May it bring you luck and glory and glory in battle in the future. Takes it the, quickly. The gift, the gift of the the gift of the scale, is important. It has a symbolic meaning. I create I create a weak spot on my ba- on the back of my neck that could easily be exploit- exploited. Exploited. To show my to show my trust in you that I tr- that I trust you to sit there within reach of it and pr- and protect it instead of exploit it. Well, I I'm not going to exploit it at all, but I shall protect it as as well as you protect me. 
Yep. And the point I, is, I just want to make it clear that this is very much a, a sign of faith in the person I give this to. You can count on me, Minioneer. You can okay. count on me. I need to do a quick bit of. I need to do a quick bit to finish up the ritual, but I promise this will not take long. Five hours later. <laughs> <laughs> That's just gonna. Were, Tanapar, oh, Chilapen were, Catalin, Ui sealed, Persifect, Mior, Cogged, Col, Ultra, Real, Kiri. And with that, you now have access to the, my, to a, to my partner bond. Whoa! What, once this bond is made, I can't a dragon king cannot make, form another partner unless the unless the current partner dies. <laughs> but here are the b- b- no. things we get: we now get we now have telepathy with each other when within 100 feet of each other, and if we are within 30 feet of each other when combat breaks out, we both roll initiative. Then we both take whichever die rolls higher between the two. Between the two of us. Oh, so you share an initiative roll? Oh, that's cool. Yep. We'll still both use our modifiers, but like if one of us rolls a t- uh, 18 on initiative, one of us warns a five, and the other rolls a five, we can both use the 18. That's cool. <laughs> like so, that. anyways, R- then. Riddle goes up. Then in your head, we'll be like, so as part of this, we can now, commu- we can now communicate telepathically. Think of ah, it as ah. a secret handshake, ah, ah. so secret and prestigious that other people don't even know we're doing it. Wow. Riddle goes, like, Riddle goes, are they married now? What's, what just happened? <laughs> uh, over the time of this ritual, though, or at least overnight, uh, you'll, Kijak, she'll take the scale and kind of like, just with her engineering skill, sort of make, do, make it into like a makeshift pin and like pin it on like a badge, but writes her name on it. So it's like her executive name tag. For, for being vice president minion here, minion. Vice president minion. No, 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 you're not. No, no vice. Full president. <laughs> Crosses out the vice. I shouldn't have etched exec- it in there. Ex- no. Executive president. Executive president of minion affairs. Oh, this means I get to go to the executive bathroom suite, and I get to to ride second to first class on shuttles. And oh, this is the best gift ever. I should have worked for you from the beginning. Yes, I hope the ritual was satisfactory. The truth is that I don't know as much about being a dragon as I should be. My background offered me very few instances to learn properly, which is part of why I went to go to try access. But I understand stay and dragons are supposed to be no- are supposed to be noble and wise creatures. So I'm doing my be- I'm doing my best to. Sh- Best to show my to show my wisdom through compa- through compassion and, ob- and, nobil- and my nobility by protecting others. So I'm pretty sure I'm on the right track of what a dragon's supposed to be. Well, I would think that even if it's not exactly what's supposed to do, it's still you're you're trying to move in that direction, and that's worth something. And I would I would imagine that's dragon's honor at the very least. So since this is not this is not a private affair, just curious if anyone speaks up to correct Wolf on how dragons work at that point. <laughs> I don't think anyone else knows except for maybe Kaja. Yeah. I would have no clue. I'm just kind of sitting there watching Bolt's in very work and contemplating the implication of very state of being. It sounds very foreign to have souls just use the same body. Andrews are the only ones who basically says it. Now my and now my soul leaves my body and mean it literally. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the following morning, um, bolts in the very thirteen um, are aim- able to triangulate the location of the stellar flare. Um, they found a, an old map of the uh, of all the junkyards around Kefik Depot. Um, started like putting X's and like pieces of string connecting connecting places try to find it and as everyone wakes up um very announces that they've located it from um located in the outer junk fields it's one of the more remote um the remote parts of the junkyards around Kevin Depot how 
how big is this junker? Is the junk area like the size of a city? Acres and acres and acres. It's acres huge. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought the I thought the junk was the entire planet. <laughs> oh no! Well, it be that big. Th there's like littered starships everywhere because um there was a battle that took place over the gap and apparently it was a huge battle so there's this kind of it's, it's like an airplane graveyard yeah um but this is specifically uh one section of the um of the planet yeah well this is much less dangerous than the other than the other starship graveyard i know about so upon hearing that it's located in the outer junk fields riddle looks um very concerned she goes uh, no 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 way i'm sorry very but the outer junk fields are a death trap have been ever since a bunch of space goblins and isekis moved in last year they turned the they just turned the place into a war zone the goblins and the isekis each think is isekis isekis each think Sorry. The goblins and the Isekis both think they should be in charge, and neither side will budge. They're constantly trying to kill each other. You'll think one of them will gain the upper hand, but... But they're all a bunch of tedious little... Ah. She, uh, sniffles a... a expletive. No, so, sorry, no, it's, it's just too dangerous. But Very 13 objects. Nonsense. You've got some of the bravest and most clever guides right here. And she gestures to the party. I think we will be safe, despite the conflict that might be occurring there. The cannon raises up. Oh, hey, we slept. I get one more hit point back. Yay, I'm slowly making my way back to full health. <laughs> yeah, make sure you only take one yeah. long rest, because we've, we've done it like three times during the <laughs> the past. Like... Oh, three? So, we yeah. can actually, so I would actually have two more hit points than what I... No, wait, no, I calculate one of them already. No, no, so I'm just, just saying... Uh, I, no, no, I, I'm just saying I've said you've had a long rest in the, within, like, the past half hour, like, three times, so... Um. <laughs> so I imagine that the dialogue happens, like, you've got the greatest people... you got some good crew right over here, and it, like, goes over, and everybody's in their morning routine, <laughs> yeah. and, like, half asleep, and uh, Wolf is basically just, like... Oh wow! I feel so much better after you know having muscle aches or something because of what HP. <laughs> um. Very thirteen goes. Of course, you will be compensated. She says I can offer you each fifteen hundred credits. Um. Let me get the exact. Let's get this bread. I love bolts. <laughs> he loves you too. <laughs> See, so um, just making sure for what the conditions are. It's for the recovery of the um of the technology. So Kaijax and Wolf are essentially dragon married, and Bolts and Vari are essentially robot married. That means basically, um. Dylan's gotta basically hook up with the mousy. She goes, eh? eh? <laughs> um, <laughs> she's saying 1,500 credits for the recovery of the uh, experimental Rift, um, the Rift uh, battery, plus 25. Uh, to do, but future earnings could be much more. I can offer 25%. Of uh, any, um, of any profit made during its sale. I mean, it's still going to be enough to be rich, right? <laughs> Riddle uh, just, speaks up, I, and I get a five percent finder's fee. Say so, agreed. I, all I'm saying is that we, if we if we can patent it and own the tech technology, then we can control where it goes and and have just royalties. And just have it. Uh, I'll explain later. Just kind of gives up. <laughs> Everyone just has a blank stare, like you're speaking a foreign language. Uh, I learned it during orientation at my company. Very important to hold on to all intellectual property. All right. So, um. Riddle asks if you have any questions about space goblins or uh, 
Steckies. I, I have questions for you. Do I know what an Ishteki is? So they are native to Akaton. Um, you would have seen them around Kefik Depot. They are a uh, red lizard-like race. Oh, do they look like uh, Jack and Wolf? Um, or is that racist to ask? S- smaller than than Wolf, larger than Kajak. Mm. Oh, they're the baby bear of dragons. <laughs> See if there's a uh, t- t- picture of them in the game. So I think you gave uh, Bolts slash Bryce control of the junk drone. Because I'm able to move it. Here, here's an example of a sticky. Oh, those are t- those are tough boys. That's yep. scary looking. And uh, you've, you've seen some space goblins wander around too, like little <laughs> like little uh, Jawas, yeah, running around. Uh, but. This is a space goblin, little bulbous headed creatures. He's a cute little guy. Yeah, cute little guys. <laughs> Look at all those teeth. There's so many. <laughs> He's basically all mouth is all teeth. <laughs> yeah. He looks like someone fed a mogwai after midnight. Yeah, and, and Riddle tells us like it's like yeah, they, they showed up in the outer junk fields. Drove away most of Whatever business would have been had there. It's been like a turf war going on there for a better part of a year. Oh, turf war between those two. Yeah, between the two. Yep. He says there's two factions. The goblins are known as the trash hunters, and the Aztecis are the unbrewed. I heard they're exiled from their clans, so they no longer have a, a, a brood of their own. So that's where the name comes from. You get it? You understand that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think I follow. They are just looking for a home. Well, they found one. In the outer junk fields. I know a lot of money's on the line, but this is this could be a little risky. I mean, for- it is a lot of money. Let's let's be clear about that. There's 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 risk for money and there's risk for a lot of money. I I think we'll be okay. Anyone who's curious about more about space goblins or Ishtekis, roll me a life science check. Good is it Ishtekis or is it Isoki? I've always pronounced it Isoki. Um, I can write it down. I'm just kind of... Well, I mean, oh, you, know, you, you started the handout, so you know how it's... I'm not good at life science. Natural not 20 right. for 23. Uh, Yasoki are the, are the rats. All the rat people. Yeah. Yep. Ishteki are the uh, lizards. Oh, sorry. I got. I'm. I am dumb. For some reason, I, for some reason, <laughs> I was thinking rats this entire time, and that was just being pronounced different. I know. The, um, I'll put it on again. These are these red lizards. Ignore me. I'm being dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yes. Yeah, so who's rolling a life science check? Uh, I rolled a twenty-three with a natural twenty. And you want to know more about Shekis or Space Goblins? Both. Okay. You want me to you roll a second time? No, I was going to say, you only rolled once. You got to pick one. Yeah, a separate uh, one for each species. Alright, well, I'll, we'll, do, we'll do the red guys first, and I'll do this uh, life science. 11 for the Space Goblins. Okay. Uh, since you rolled so high for the um, Shekis, uh don't say, yeah, they're... Uh, they're native here. They they're used to living in the waste. Saying um, and one thing about them is uh, is they can shoot blood from their eyes when they're in danger. You don't want to get hit by that. Get you disoriented. It's like a natural defense they had back when they were just little lizards, you know. Saying, but the uh, well, I guess the stuff you're recalling since you had to roll for it. But um, he goes most interesting things about Istekis is uh. When they're juvenile, it's like when they're, uh, when they come into maturity and they don't breed for a while, then they call, and they, they become what they call a, a rivener. 
is Stecky. That means they grow really big, really muscly, and have a big temper. Oh, good! I can get nearly get killed by a new by a new and exciting animal this time. And with a eleven for the space goblins, um, they go, yeah, they're nasty little. They're like nasty little little guys. They they best they they basically have a religion based around a uh, collecting junk. And be careful whatever they invent because they could explode at any moment. I have I have a quick question about them since this since they've been fighting each other for a long time, do we have a general idea of what uh, what kind of weapons are using? Are they mo are they are they mostly using small arms, long arms? Do they are they equipped with with what with me with melee weapons? Do they have cybernetics? Like what do we what do we know about the on that they about what they have between the it's ongoing like, turf war? It's like listen, I like listen, I don't know anything about what's personally going on. I'm not about to go out there. It's too dangerous. Um, I do know that space goblins have the uh, reputation of just using whatever they can to make junk cannons and junk blades. So be prepared for that. Sorry, I was just hoping that there might be some general knowledge on it since this has been happening for so long. But apparently, a turf a turf war going on multiple years is just another is just another day on Akaton. Yep. <laughs> Great, just so we need another conflict to get in the middle of. But I'm game. I mean, where else am I gonna ride my dragon? <laughs> Perhaps we can resolve the conflict. I should, I should mention that I'm not very good good at flying yet. I'm do, but I'm doing, I'm doing exercises and building up my wing strength. I'm sure it won't be that long before I can, before I can fly for real without having to land every six seconds. Okay, red, I'll wear wait, a helmet. red, I will be able to fly normally when I'm level six, which is beyond the scope of this adventure. <laughs> can you I'll, legally I'll wear ride a, a dragon through the McFlorables drive through You know what? I don't see any legal reason he can't. If they would be accept other mounts, then why don't? Then why can't I, I count as a normal mount? <laughs> McFlorables, McFlorables, McFlorables. He 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 can he can he can show them that he can show them my the dragon skill I gave him as his driver's license. <laughs> Pretty sure you can just walk through a drive through. They're not going to the joke. They're Charlie, not going to arrest you. <laughs> be funny if they I'm did though. Short, I can't reach the window. <laughs> no, so, I'm going to fly through a drive through, six seconds at a time. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're going to fly past it. Let's let's be honest. So I am Mark, I'm a pedant. <laughs> Riddle tells you that the best way to get to the outer junk fields is through Rust Town. It's um kind of a commercialized part of the uh of the junk fields. Um and like the most tourist safe spot. Um there's like they they made little makeshift like rides for the kids. They they made um like art pieces out of uh piles of junk to get like tourists take pictures with them. Um, she admits that she wants to get her art pieces there one day, but she doesn't think they're good enough. But um, one day you will have you just you just try doing okay. like you know still art. What you need to, what you need to do is that little voice in your head that tells you you're not good enough, and you're not going to make it. Crush that voice like the pathetic, by, like the pathetic little parasite it is. You can do this, and you won't tolerate. And you won't tolerate someone telling you you can't. Not even voices inside your head. Well, maybe someday. That's what I do. <laughs> Having a bunch of money though will get me in the uh, artistic mood. I think. But <laughs> once you get past the um, obelisk of refrigerators, that's when you know you've reached the. Uh, Outer junk field. Obelisk of refrigerators? Yes. Yeah. What's weird about that? Uh, it's right next to Toaster uh, uh, Mountain. It's right next to the uh, the Lake of Plastic. Plastic containers. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was a normal lake, but basically all the microplastics eventually overtook the density of the water, and then, you know, it just became a, a, a lake of plastic. So it takes the heroes about an hour to walk through the Rust District from Adventures of Junk. As they go, you pass various landmarks and debris along the way. A small lake of disposable plastic containers, wrapped panes of trans transparent aluminum as tall as trees, and a tunnel of outdated electronic games. Much of the much like the car yards, these installations are more like modern art than heaps of trash. So think of like the giant tire pile was like yeah. a prelude to what you're seeing here. What are some of the games in the in the tunnel? I imagine they're basically like Tiger Electronics. <laughs> yeah. Like that Aladdin handheld game? You can either pick the apple or throw the apple. The, the LCD hey, I, games that are I, 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 had that. Game. I mean, that game was I awesome. Had I had the Aladdin Tiger game. That's what I'm talking oh. about. Yeah, oh, that, that thing was awesome. I, that's my childhood. Yeah. He literally said that's what he had. Mark was like, no. <laughs> I know. I'm agreeing with him. <laughs> I'm agreeing with him, not to, not critiquing him. <laughs> she does give a little more information about the the battery that um apparently the breakthrough was uh, combining the Rift engine with the uh, the uh, Tassaron, um, uh ore that was very common on um, Akaton. That's what was used in Starship fuel before the um, Drift engine. Were, were, before the drift engines were created. And you know that's what's caused a lot of the mutations of all the animals on the uh, planet too, like that big um that big uh Kefik that you that you fought. Okay, so um the whole the whole time Ke uh Kaijak's riding wolf is like, Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are you there yet? Just after like after like forty five minutes of not being there, just finally just loses it and just uh, keeps saying that. And then you see the obelisk of refrigerators come over the the horizon. The ice makers are at the very top of it, so <laughs> got a snowy peak. <laughs> you know, <laughs> might be able to might be able to craft a might be able to craft a valuable weapon out of these refrigerators. I imagine it. I imagine we can make some kind of club, and hitting someone with a refrigerator would really knock them out of commission for a bit. I don't know. I feel like this is kind of a landmark. Probably shouldn't disturb it. But I mean, we're this is a junker community. No one's gonna no one's gonna care if I take one little refrigerator to turn to turn into a club. I, I mean, I don't know. That looks like a load-bearing refrigerator over there. <laughs> then I'll pick a different one. <laughs> There's like a mini fridge at the very bottom that's like holding the whole thing together. <laughs> it's like one of those novelty. I actually like, uh, might have a high enough strength to hit someone with a refrigerator. <laughs> it's like one of those um, novelty uh, Coca-Cola fridges. Very well. Yeah. Um, but at the uh, but unlike the car yards, the uh, modern junk fields are more like a maze. Uh, but you can have a generally good direction in which you should go in, thanks to the um, the high uh, computer check. But I need to, whoever is uh, to, whoever the person is leading them. Roll me a survival check. Would that would that be me since I'm the melee tank and would you and would usually take point? Sure. Uh, either that or is it is it bolts as the the resident of the of the planet? I will say my survival check sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so does mine. <laughs> I'm gonna roll it. Okay. All right, I've got a plus zero. Oh. <laughs> Hey, I got a nat twenty. Okay, yeah. that's no lie. I know. Oh, uh, you needed you needed a twenty one. <laughs> Thanks to that uh, computer in your brain. Yeah, you're able to I know the way. find a path um, pretty easily. I have been this way one time before. Uh, but. To get through here, you do come to a um, little landmark. 
Uh, swaths of trash have been pushed away to reveal red, pitted earth. Tiny bits of plastic float in the pools of filthy standing water that surround a dark, dry, ten foot... Uh, a, a, a dark, dry hole ten feet in diameter. <laughs> Guys, I don't, I don't think we should be backing up into this place. We should probably face the, <laughs> the correct direction. <laughs> Sorry, Joey, I'm joking. <laughs> One, oh, well, ignore it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Do you activate your pile of junk feet and just turn to no. a... <laughs> I'm look. I'm just facing the right dire the correct direction now. <laughs> you are the only person I know, Mark, who gets concerned about which way their tokens character is facing. Everyone else get it is a abstract concept. Yeah, so here's the thing, I didn't really... care before, but now my OCD yeah, has been yeah, triggered. Yeah, but now you do. <laughs> He's infected me. You'll... You'll make characters all facing the same way, but half of them will be looking backwards. <laughs> so then what do I do with those? <laughs> I'm turn you all. You could probably select it, all of us and then mirror at once. What they really should... I mean, the, the fact that that movement is locked behind GM is, is dumb. I think they really just don't want, like, players to just mess with the map because like i've seen you guys draw on maps before the, okay they That's okay th that can't be it because like you just said they gave the ability <laughs> yeah. I, I can i can wreak havoc on a map just fine <laughs> <laughs> okay so, oh my. so you said this is floating like the late it's like it's like a a liquid liquefaction or liquefaction type thing it's or? basically a standing Actually. pool of water with um bits of plastic floating in it Gross. Yeah. So where we're at, are we currently waiting in it? Oh no, it's a it's that space near the middle. Okay. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna get me to wait in that. Oh no, wait the, these little these little uh, I thought they were rocks. These these little um, pools, these little white things are pools of sand and water. In the middle is a uh, is a hole. Okay, that's yeah. what I thought. What's okay. the smell like here? Oh God! Okay, that's 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 all I need. I mean, here. you're on a planet <laughs> of trash. Uh, have you ever oh, been to Detroit? This is like, <laughs> um, just a thing of standing water. Um, one thing you do notice that usually, like, water's pretty rare, like this on Akaton, um, since everything's so dry. Uh, mm. But wherever there is water like this, you expect to see like insects. And stuff, and you notice that there isn't any. Okay, um, I'm gonna say, don't touch the water. Wasn't planning it... on it. Perhaps so the... we should scoot around, giving a wide berth. I didn't know that robots gave birth. Yeah, they give wide much... berth. There is much to learn. <laughs> I'm gonna scoot into the area along the top here. I'm on uh, Wolf's back, so I am locked with him. Whoops! I did not mean to ping. I was just drag. I was just trying to drag my token. No worries. I think I've taken the wrong path. We're gonna get close to the water. Gross! Does it look like thick? Um. <laughs> or does it look like water? I mean, it's, it's definitely water, but it's like oily. Uh, does it have that cool iridescent thing going on? Uh, does saying water usually have that? Well, if it's oily, it does. Uh, sure, like, yeah. you can spill gas in the water. Uh. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, no, I know, I know. Okay. Yeah. I just know it's like little, it's like all rainbow and pretty. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's. Is that pearlescent or opalescent? I think it's opalescent. Is it not iridescent? Maybe it's iridescent. Something doesn't. If you at home know the difference between those kind of things, tell us. <laughs> but um, as you skirt around the end, the edge of the uh, of the pools, you obviously still gain the attention. Something living here. 
as two lizard like creatures emerge from the hole and lash out with their thick, sticky tongues in a threatening display to get out of their territory. Good thing they're not facing us. <laughs> Good thing they're in the other direction. <laughs> You couldn't stop yourself. You tried. <laughs> you you did try at least. But we're going to test her toad. Going to roll initiative. All of they... the monsters in this game are really cute. Uh, yeah, I, I love a lot of the art. But every every art that I've seen from from, from Starfinder. I don't want to hit it. But it's, yeah, it's trying to attack you. Oh, well, it has. actually. Yeah. Which is actually really cool. So D and D is starting to is starting to use a lot of um, AI art. Paizo has released a statement that they will not release AI art for the game, and that they will and that they prefer they will continue well, to support. I mean, that's, that's not that's not true. They're not really doing that. There was there was accidental yeah AI art where it was like it, the tool side of things where it's still there happened. was a. There was someone higher up talking about you talking about using it more on purpose. I don't know if that's actually going to go through or not. Oh, you might yeah. get shut down by the stock by the stock well, That's an entire other thing. Order. I know wizards themselves has put out statements. Okay, I should rephrase so. Hasbro. Yeah, yeah. Hasbro has wants to use AI in D and D, not wizards. Yeah. A lot of people want to use AI in a lot of stuff. No, like they know that the. That like people will not stand for that. So they, if it happens, it'll be so dumb on everyone's part. Why um, get AI art whenever you could get super cool legendary frog? Oh yeah, art? They, I, my stuff is going to be on the thing, the next you, game. You could, you're gonna yeah. be. We're gonna have a legendary frog mini set of of uh, Wizard of of Magic the Gathering. So yeah, Kai I need Jack, a commission of, I need so, a commission of full full character art from you at some point. So, Kaijack and Wolf, what are your shared I a, initiative? I got a 13, so I'm good with the 19. I rolled a 19 on the die, so you can use my 19. All right, so what's so cool. Yep, so add your initiative bonus to, to that. So okay. you have deck, so you'll be going before me. So you don't you don't just take a 19, you add your, you add your initiative modifier, so your dex modifier oh. to it. Alright, so, so I got a 22 then. So I don't know, I think your junk bot technically goes in your turn, but this will, is useless in battle, so I'm just going to leave it out. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah it's, it's mage hand. That's a robot. Tom Servo. Right. This toad-like creature, which you know is a is a Thaster Toad. Yet another animal that has been changed by the Thasteron in the area. Hey, Kaijek, what's your what's your actual deck what's your actual dex? Is it sixteen or eighteen? Uh, or seventeen? Find it. Where is it? Uh boop -a doop. Dex plus three, sixteen. Okay. Monster's gonna go first then. Let's read the solo quick. Okay. First one climbs out of their uh, their hidey hole. Uh. So, how big did you say these things are? Um, they're uh, two, they're small, magical beast. So they're like the size of a small dog, medium-sized dog, not a small dog. Um, where's all their? Sorry, I'm not used to the character sheet. Just need to see how. Okay, yep, thirty feet. So they hop right through the standing water, and it will lash out its tongue at Wolf. Actually, it goes now right I here. I try to cover up. I try to cover up the neck. 
Oh, here it is, Tom. Right, uh, 27. That is a really high hit. That is a really high number. Ow. Yeah, that's... A, okay, so that's six bludgeoning damage for me. Yep, six bludgeoning damage, and... So that's pretty high. Sorry, they put the... Abilities in a weird place. Look in the book. Um... So your what's your KAC? Uh, twenty uh, fifteen. So a grapple check would need to be a would need to be a twenty three. All right. So good job. What is that thing's attack bonus? These Plus things are nine. I'm sorry. What was your uh, KAC? KAC is fifteen. just missed doing the uh, other thing. But you are grappled by this tongue. Wraps around you. But it's with, it's in a uh, ten foot ten foot tongue, so you move within ten feet of it. Right, and you take six six bludgeoning. Yep, I marked the damage down already. Good. Uh, Wolf, it's your turn. Okay. Oh, re grapple does grapple does not lower my attack roll. All right. Actually, wait, Kaijek should be going off before me. Oh, He's yeah, a twenty-two. Yeah, I put it in before I updated the uh, added my uh, Dexter initiative modifier. All right, so seeing the grapple, I'm just gonna like, like, sl yep. slide on over. I'm... Joey, Kaijack is up. <laughs> it doesn't matter what's on there. Go ahead. Okay, fine. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna slide down and just I'm gonna take out my. Uh, uh, I can't just take out a weapon. Well, it's a move action to take out a weapon, so I'll take out my. Uh, knife and I'm just gonna like try and stab the tongue that's grabbing him if that counts or if you need me to get closer I can just do that or you know, trying to thematically You're... like stab at it. You can try to stab at it but, off but it's, just shooting it. it's way too sticky, yeah. Okay. I'll just uh, instead of doing that I'll just go go ahead and take out my pulse caster pistol. Um and actually we'll just sneak attack because or you know trick attack because I can just do that. Um, why is your why is your token always like halfway onto wolves? Because I'm riding him. Yeah, that's not how it works. Oh, okay. not in combat. <laughs> um, that was a new god. Uh, brick attack. Where is this? Uh, move and then make attack with a melee weapon or the thing. Stealth check. So I'm gonna try and. Uh, uh, intimidate by just being like, you stay off and just shoot him like all around before aiming him. Okay. So I'm going to try and intimidate him first for the trick attack. 15 is not beating the 20 plus CR. Uh, so I just do a, the normal attack, which is Pulse Caster Pistol. Uh, I can close that. Does a 14 hit? 14 does hit. Ooh, they're weak. Takes two uh, if e damage, energy damage. Okay. Doesn't do much though. It has pretty thick armor plating on its back. Better than nothing. Here's a fun fact: this thing understands goblin, but it can't speak it. Yep. <laughs> So there you go. Don can understand certain like human words if it's trained. So, and I assume it couldn't understand various other languages versions of those words. Right. We're highly educated <laughs> toad lizard dogs. Right. Uh, wolf. 
Okay. Shift into shift into photon mode. Is as I start flaring up. Oh boy, did you choose the wrong person to grab onto? You are not going to like it when I'm on, when I'm on fire. Um. Uh. I. Uh, I'm still here. Oh, I thought you moved off. But I guess, okay, I, I, I guess, yeah. Joey I can't actually do Stellar Rush anyway. Can I stand here without being in the water? Um, if the water's there, then you're stepping in it. Well, the water is in part of the is the water, the water is overstepping part part of the. Don't town, worry not. about the water; it's not going to hurt you. Spoilers. Actually, where am where is the best spot to go? That's going to I'm trying to figure out the best spot to go that won't that will leave people open to fire. Down here would probably be better. That way, that and that way, Ela right? can get a can get an easy shot shot aimed in. Yeah. And now's for uh, now, stabby stabby. Yes, yeah, so now, now that you move closer, you now are grappled, so you have a movement of zero. Just so you know. Wait, moving moving in makes me automatically grappled. You, you were grappled before. Okay, but I was. It, but I can still move into him. I just can't move away, right? Yep. Okay, that's fine. No, that's not fine. I nat one my. I rolled a nat one on my attack roll, so I'm doing absolutely nothing cool here. Yeah, it has your. Uh, <laughs> has your has your hand wrapped around its tongue? Gosh, darn it! Let. Stop! 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 Grab, stop grabbing my claws! They're made of fire anyway. How are you doing that? All right. So this is gonna hop right by Wolf to Isla. Um, is being grappled. I just assume you can't move. You have a maybe a lower AC. My two panels into armor class. Yeah. Get to go. Actions require two hands. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so my kinetic armor class just dropped to like 13. So you get an attack of opportunity as the uh, Thasher Toad goes by you. Okay, opportunity to redeem myself. Dice roll, go. I believe in you. Uh -huh. Hey, a 20. Not an at 20, but. <laughs> yep, hits. Oh god, what is my claw damage now? 1d6 plus 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1d1 one fire. 1d1 one fire, that's hilarious. Gotta roll that d1. You said you built it into your uh, attack, right? Yeah, the attack damage isn't correct right there. I'll have to fix it, but for now I can... It's missing. It's missing my. It's just missing my strength modifier in the formula, though. Yep. I have to see what I did wrong. Why that's not adding in. But for now, that means it's going to be one d six plus five total. Okay. Ten. Ten damage. Eight of it is slashing. Two of it is fire. All right. Oh Thanks. wait. Sorry. Eleven damage. I forgot about being in photon mode. So. Okay. Yeah, it takes off a big chunk of it. Or is that, or is one of that, or is one of those fire damage photon mode already included? I don't. It shouldn't be. Okay, I, what, while we wait for my next turn, I'm going to figure out what the why why the damage form isn't showing up and get it corrected. <laughs> Imagine if you didn't toggle anything; it doesn't know you're in photon mode. But, but I had to write the damage in manually anyway, so it's possible that I accidentally wrote it in with a photon point included. Right, does 18 hit your kinetic armor class? I yes. Alright. You take uh, 6 bludgeoning damage. And what is your kinetic armor class? Kinetic armor class is 16. 16, alright. You are not grappled. You're just too slimy. <laughs> slimy. Gross. But it's your turn. All right. Um, 
taking a weapon out is a move, right? I'm gonna say, like, you had your weapons at the ready. This is dangerous territory. I'm not going to, like, say this is unexpected. Okay. Yeah. Then I'm gonna take a five foot guarded step. It looks up at you with big reptile puppy dog eyes. It's adorable. I'm going to shoot the other one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that one just looks like a cat. You're good. Yeah, that one goes me. It has a chihuahua, right. like a little, little scowl. It's an evil little chihuahua looking one. Yep. <laughs> Sorry to all the 15. chihuahua lovers out there. 15 hits. So then that is five damage. Fire, if it matters. Okay. Well, it definitely hurts. Right? Bolts. Right. Bolts is going to uh, wave his hands in the air while firing his can his uh, gun. He doesn't have to use his hands to do it. <laughs> Look what I can do. Yeah, um, I am going to, as a move action, uh, designate this thing as my targeted enemy to mm -hmm. get a little bonus. Uh, and I will fire for a 25. Oh, that's actually a crit. It's a 20 plus 5. That's a crit. Yeah. Man, I am on fire with some rolls tonight. Gonna, I, shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said that. Right, as you, uh... <laughs> he has the thresher tool. Roll me a d100. Okay. That did Get it. Hold on. A 62. Okay. Yeah. Right? And so... Uh, right, you it, find it. Yeah, you um, manage to find a really weak spot in its armor, and uh, it is treated as a normal critical hit. Wonderful. Um, is that all dice roll twice for damage? Yes, we all damage doubles. Yeah, right. we, we unlike D and D, you get the bonuses with each roll. So, yeah. yes. Okay, this yep. one being a rifle doesn't have any extra, but that's okay. It is a total of um, nine fire damage, but also this uh, laser rifle has a crit of, it says burn 1d6. So whatever that means, and I would like you to tell me, uh, it is a four. It means it catches on fire and will take, and will, on a crit and, and takes and will take 1d4 of damage every every round on its turn. Including this one? Including this one, but it won't take it till its turn. Okay. Yeah, yeah so uh, well, on, on its turn, it'll, it'll, it'll roll damage. Okay, cool. So yeah, that was a 9 uh, fire damage. Alright. Oh, you need a flamethrower. That would be cool. This new toy is better than I expected. Did I... I am sorry for shooting you, you adorable creature. I think I messed up the turn orders here. Hold on. Um... No, still an order. No, I, I accidentally did the wrong, wrong one. So it's this one's turn. It's going to try to. Um... Uh, redo its grapple on you, try to constrict you again, but this time it is it is against uh, your um, uh, whatever the maneuver AC is. So we will attempt to constrict. Uh, I'm guessing an 18 will miss on the grapple. Wolf. Oh, yes, 18 misses on the grapple, sorry. Okay. You are not grappled anymore. Huzzah! I think you don't taste I, very good. But I still took three damage. <laughs> mm. 
photon mode makes Wolf very spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was to... I think he missed. That was to uh, attempt to keep you grappled. Oh, so that was just a grapple check, not a not a attack roll? Yeah, if it succeeded, you would have taken damage as well. Okay, never mind. Yep. I will give myself back those hit points. But it, since you're no longer grappled, it is going to attempt to retreat. Do you attack it? Yeah, of course I... Of course, of course though I'm not actually sure if I can, because I already used an attack of opportunity this round. Yeah... You're right. My so turn, it, in slight, and sadly, my turn hasn't come back yet, so I haven't gotten my reaction back. So it hops away into its little hiding hole. Hey, hey, Baltz, I think we know I gotta throw one of those grenades you bought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> freaking, freaking rude. <laughs> uh, Kajak. Uh, seeing that one slither away, uh, I'm going to... Uh, use a trick attack, move over here, and because I'm small and, and adorable, I'm going to hide behind Illa to do my trick attack bonus of stealth. If you will allow that, Joey. Oh yeah. As long as it makes sense. There's, there's no like there's no like special ruling what you have to do. 22 on the trick attack roll. Uh, that will hit. Is, well, it's not the hit. It's the 20 plus target CR. Yeah, that, that'll hit. Okay, so I, it is flat-footed against my attack. That's something I forgot every other time I was doing this. So I'll take my pulse caster pistol and shoot. It's minus two, uh, I think. Cool, because I rolled a five. Five, um, unless flat-footed is like minus eight. I don't think that was. It's gonna hit. I was gonna look up. Ah, my gun is. jammed. I can't. Oh, the battery. I put it in upside down. That was my turn. Because I have one thing I do. <laughs> Flat footed is a minus two. You cannot can't take reactions. But that's only if it against, hit though. It was against my attack only, so yeah. it's it's fine now. All right. Wolf. Wolf. Hey hey there, buddy. You re you remind me you remind me of a jerk I'm going to kill. <laughs> oh god, I hope it's not me. Okay, maneuvering around it before moving into melee range just to make to avoid its provoking attack of opportunity and to make sure that all the party to make sure and make placing myself so all the party members have a clear shot on it. Okay, here we go. That was. Uh, whoops! I did not mean to roll damage. Sorry, wrong roll. Eighteen to hit. Eighteen will hit. Do you yes. want to just take the damage roll I did yep. on accident, or do, should I do a new one? Nope, let's do the eights. Good damage. Okay, so eight. So eight damage. It's looking really hurt. You like slash off. Like, and I should. And I sh scales. And I shift farther into photon mode. I look like I'm going to blow any second. Not that it knows that. The, the rest of the party probably recognizes the fact that I'm getting ready, that I'm about to explode. Ah, yeah, It must know on some level. Remember, I got in reverse, so they're in the wrong order. Uh, he will basically disengage into the hole. Did we win? I hope they're not going for reinforcements. Maybe I should have bought a couple grenades so I could throw one down there now. <laughs> on, the other hand, my, on the other hand, my, if they've learned if they've learned their lesson, aren't going to bother us. They were just dumb animals looking for food. They might might be best just to leave them. I mean, they they probably have you know little baby broods that they have to have to feed, and you know. I mean, I'm trying. Have. I'm trying to think of reasons to not blow them up. <laughs> I mean, alternatively, make a cool explosion. Okay, okay, but I don't have grenades, so it's not something I can do, and I'm not the one who gets to make that decision. You are a grenade. Ha! <laughs> Throw you down the hole. <laughs> uh, that... 
might work. <laughs> Drag it in the hole. <laughs> but I don't know how deep that hole is, and I don't know if I'd be able to get out once I was in, once I was down there. So I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah, none of us have rope. I'm gonna move over here and take some of the veggie chips and meat snacks out of my bag and throw it down the hole. Okay. Aww. As you get closer, um, I want you to make a perception check. Nineteen. Nineteen. You think you might see something glittering down there. <gasps> like something that's not the, um, Thasher Toad, but... You think you might have to get a little closer to make out what it is. Yes, I'm going to move closer against my better judgment. <laughs> we could we could we could send the new drone the new drone to take a look and try to grab and try to grab it. That's true. If she tells us what she's looking at. I don't know what she's looking at. She's just looking down the hole. Did use the junk drone? Because yeah, well, it, I mean, it, I'm waiting for it, it, do you, it to tell us what she's looking at. So. Do you see them? Are they okay? No, uh, I don't see them, but I think I see something down there. Not quite sure what it is. Someone else can give me a perception check if they want to, want to check. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. 22. 22. Over the hole. That's I high. got a four. What? I, I don't even. I didn't. I don't even see a hole. What are you guys talking yeah. about? You're standing all the way back there. You can't see down the hole. <laughs> you were one off for actually seeing what it was. Um. You see a half buried canister. I think it might contain something. Uh, maybe it could be a McFlorable Shamrock Shake. You also I'll see the uh, Faster Toads um, nibbling on the um, veggie chips. I think they're distracted from your the, the, the food you ran through down there. Uh, if that's the case, I'm going to have Tom Servo very quickly just like, loop, and then grab the thing. He does have <laughs> grappler arm thingy. Yeah, it's actually a good thing you put that distraction. Yeah, <laughs> good, 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 uh, uh, pet momming. Yep, so you see the, uh, you see Tom Servo, the junk drone, go into the hole, disappear into the darkness, and a few mo a moment later come up with a small container. Emma, you got dibs because you spotted it. Cool. I'll uh, take the canister and check it out. Okay. Open it up. It contains 4,000 U UPBs. Whoa. It's that, uh, that's... That's a lot. So, from what we're talking about, each one... UP UPB, I think it's supposed to be worth 1,000 credits. I think it's saying it's 4,000 4, credits worth of UPBs. <laughs> Unless... I'm unfamiliar with the terminology. Yeah, basically what basically what the interchangeable one thousand credit yep. credit, so So we can use that and money we have to tr to purchase something more expensive. Or craft nice. something more expensive one of us when, when if one of us becomes a crafter. So it also it... Cont contains a uh, a mind link circlet mark one. And since Archives of Archive of, of Nethys is down. I don't know what it is. So <laughs> there's gotta be what's another. It, what's site, it called? Right? What's it called? Well, I mean, our site has items. A my, oh. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. A mind link circlet mark one. I don't know why I can't uh, look up items on here. Like I have to do it through a character sheet. You have to do it through the creator. Yeah, you can telepathically communicate with any creatures within thirty feet with which you share a language. It's walkie-talkies. Sending stones. 
Oh, yeah, but but you only need the one. Okay, it's a bullhorn. Yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a it's a magical item. So yeah, it's like it's a telepathic bullhorn. It is actually a hybrid item. Oh, it is Magitech. What does that mean mechanically? Uh, mechanically, nothing special. Just means that the item uses both magic and technology in its construction. That's pretty cool. Yep. So one well, we can't really do anything with any of this now. I mean, but... you already you already have two people that are like talking, talking through their minds. Might as well have another one. Can we put it on the drone so we can scout ahead and tell and report back to us? Um, <laughs> I think I'm pretty sure it has to have a conscious mind for this to work. Yeah. Plus, do you speak uh, beeps and boops? So you might uh, actually. Point. Point. You might I'm actually. Not... <laughs> yeah. I, uh... <laughs> so um, you can hang on for now, but one of you can have that. I where do I see my languages? traits it's what you did during character creation like you pick one like based on a species and based on a home world i think yeah then after that you gain one language for every ranking culture you take but and, I, and that's the only way to add new languages where do i see that on hyphesta oh i have zero language oh so i apparently <laughs> didn't i don't speak anything I, you guys have not been hearing me this whole time <laughs> i do not talk <laughs> It's okay. I speak the binary language of evaporators, and evaporators can translate into space German, and then space German goes into whatever you speak. Oh, common and human are two different languages? What is it? That's funny. <laughs> I guess that I, that I makes guess sense. that makes sense, yeah. like, in the, the, the world? Yeah, galaxy doesn't revolve around humans. Yeah. <laughs> No, it revolves around the black hole in the center. With the toads living in it. Yeah. yeah. This is the center of the universe. We are you found at it. the center. <laughs> oh god, I'm going into the I'm going getting sucked into the event horizon. <laughs> no! No! Kaja, the vacation. Kaja, no! <laughs> so there is actually not a map for this next area, so we're going theater of the mind. <gasps> I've got one of those. In your mind? Mine's in wide mine is in widescreen. I'll turn on Borderlands music though. Yeah. Here I'll, I'll just go to the uh Kevin Depot. But imagine this is the uh thing with Jake. That's music. So not far after this uh, um, toad hole. You definitely know that the location of the stellar flare isn't too far away. And um, it's kind of a straight shot from where you are. Is that too loud for you guys? Does that sound good? That's good. Okay. Uh, you hear two voices coming from a clearing in the junk. Not too, not too far ahead. Hey, listen. I'll hush everybody. Shh. I hear something. Maybe try to ap approach cautiously and find. And listen to the voices and find out they're find out they're going to be people we can talk to, or if they're people that are going to tr immediately try start trying to shoot us. That's good. If you want to uh, attempt a stealth check, me a... absolutely not. Someone else should. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got good stealth. I'll uh, I'll uh, sneak on up. Okay. Don't you wish he had that junk camouflage now? <laughs> Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, you start to sneak up and you see a, uh, a, a goblin and a Ishteki, um, kind of in conversation. 
I will relate what I see telepathically back to Wolf and tell him to tell everyone else. Are you wearing that thing? No, he can. We can. He, me, and oh, Kaija yeah, can communicate it, telepathically at will now. Got it. Got it. Got it. Activate okay, my so jump trick. There's apparently there's a, apparently a goblin and an, a stick that are to, that are talking to each other, which is weird. I thought there would be more enemies. So, but there's a good. You should probably find out what they're talking about. Maybe there's a chance they won't try to kill us. I can hope that not everyone we talk to tries to kill us today. Oh, that's right. There's a handout with them. It's really good. Let me show you. Wait till you see it. This is what you see. Ah. <laughs> so, a female space goblin dressed in a pair of dirty coveralls rummages through a battered chest almost as large as herself. While a male Isheki, wearing a shiny silver flight suit, sits nearby on an overturned and discarded cooking range. Um, Just what's in there, the Isheki says. We've been rummaging for hours. Oh, nothing is good in here, the goblin answers, closing the lid and jumping to stand on it. See? Um, see, this is what I was talking about. We have to focus. The goblin balances on one leg and begins picking her nose. What? The Ashteki hides his face in his palms. Merc, the mid-zone, you said you had the way into the starship. Oh yeah, she says, I have a plan. Then she hops off the trunk and opens it. Hmm, there might be something in here. But it's around that time she noticed that there is a kobold spying on them. The goblin goes, Quash, quash. Still picking her nose. We, we, have a, we have a visitor. We have a little visitor. Wolf, they said they have a visitor. And the Ishteki turns his head towards you. Uh, Kaija, Kaija, I think they're talking about you. No, I mean, uh, okay, they're looking at me. At, uh, okay, yeah, I, okay. You should, uh, you, sh you should probably say something to them so, to tr so, to try, in a, so that, that the situation doesn't escalate into violence. Oh, okay. um, they're, they're, he's, they're just looking at you now, like, tilting their heads, saying, you think you're gonna say anything? It's like, I don't know, let's just, just wait it out. Um, okay, um, I'm gonna wave at them and say, um, I had McFlorables! Ah, oh, I'm getting too nervous. He has McFlorables! Get yep. him! <laughs> hey, get him! No. It's like, <laughs> McFlorables, who, who cares? Saying, you haven't had McFlorables in months! Saying, I mean, so this stuff is bad for you. you know the stuff they cook that in. Saying, "Hey you, I, why are you trying to hide?" Um, practice. <laughs> Not very good at it, you see. I'm trying to get better. What do you think he wants? Hey, what do you want? Wolf, what do I want? Okay. Tra 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 traveler, look, traveler looking for junk to salvage just arrived in the area. Okay, Traveler, I just say it verbatim. <laughs> traveler just looking in the area, get junk in the... Oh, say it again. Well, say it again, I missed it. <laughs> you well, say that, you say that just out loud. To, just <laughs> let them think we're normal junk hunters looking... Look, just in the, in the air, having traveled to the area to look for junk to sell. I, even though I'm the only one that can be seen, I do say that verbatim, more or less, and I say, yeah, we're the only, I, we're, we're looking for... No, you said the first part verbatim, out. then you pause for a minute, and then, then yeah. you said this, and he goes, I'm um... Holding my, I'm holding my hand up to my ear, too. Yeah, even though you don't so have to. here's the thing. I don't know if I can actually hear him talking, talking out loud, so I can, might only be able to hear, hear, I might only be able to hear the mental <laughs> side. Yeah. Yeah. Um... <laughs> He goes, I didn't think there was any junkers still exploring this park because of the war. Saying, yeah, it's real well, dangerous. You should probably go home. Well, what are you doing here? Saying, we, we live here. Yeah, we live here. We're allowed to be here. I guess you are, too. Am I, I'm not trespassing, am I? 
kind of look at each other and they go, mm hmm. I guess not. This is kind of our own ter. It's like just our own little special place. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, we hang good. out here because we're best friends, aren't we, Quesh? And he goes, We're not best friends, Merc. We're uh, acquaintances. I have, I have best friends. Hey, best friends, come and say. And I'll, I'll call out to the rest of the party. <laughs> I love the art here, too. You can just tell Quesh is just tired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. So much, so much, for, so much for the stealth. So much for, the, so much for the stealth approach. That's okay. They saw me. Oh, there's more yeah, of them. Kind of like my you, friends. Yeah, I'm sure you. I'm sure you did your best. So, Wolf. Will, all right, let's go meet them. So Wolf will be Wolf will be walking up and just be like, "Hi, I'm a dragon. Oh, he's, and you, and he's bigger than the Kai little Jack's one. My cobalt minion." Yeah, I'm, I'm the main. Who are you? <laughs> we have like a little little lizard, a medium lizard, and a big lizard. Aren't you excited about um, that quest? He goes, dragon, mm -hmm. not lizard. Yeah, it's a lizard. <laughs> sticks his sticks her uh, finger back up her nose, saying, "That's not what you're doing here." Hello. Just Bulk, seeing the what sights. Are you guys doing? Yeah. Go ahead. Just seeing the sights. Well, I don't know if you heard earlier, but there's a kind of a turf war going on here between our two people, and uh, not too safe for tourists here anymore. So I suggest you head back to the depot. You two seem to be getting along pretty well. Yeah, we do get along really well, Quish. Don't you think? He goes, Well, we're the exception, not the rule. So you want to hear the story about how we met? Yeah, sure. Why not? Mark, don't tell. Okay, fine. It's like, well, there I was, about to bring down the legendary trash golem of the outer junk fields. Ah. I had him on the ropes. And then I saw a quest here running away. Like a little baby. He goes, I wasn't running away. Well, I was running away. But you didn't have him on the ropes. You were running away too. And I had him down to his last bit of mechanical parts. But he proved too much. But me, with Quesh here, we were able to outsmart the golem and escape with our lives. And in the process, I gained a new friend. He runs over to Quest and hugs him. Yeah. Isn't that right, Quest? He goes, Yeah, I guess we're friends a little bit. Aww. Aww. I met so these guys on the fighting over the... here. Good. You two were able to overcome the disagreement between your species why not the rest of you what's going on what's this turf war over I mean other than just turf can't you divvy out land our leaders are pretty stingy and hard to negotiate with saying oh, the leader of the unbrews Ashala is a is a has riven a f few months ago, so she is not able to be negotiated with. And then Bomb Guzzle, that's the leader of the Trash Hunters. That's the part. That's the group that I'm a member of. Um, like he thinks he should be the king of the whole junkyard, so he's not going to give give way to anyone, especially not uh, Ashala. Some big, roided up lizard person. No offense, Quesh. So, but yeah, we were able to look past our good differences because we were in a life-threatening situation together. But uh. well, maybe, maybe that's what you need to do with your leaders. Like put put them in a room and then like lock the door so they have to work out their differences and then start flooding it from the bottom. And if they don't, you know, <laughs> they gotta, you know. 
That's a pretty I'm, good um, idea. Maybe we should do that. I'm not sure if death traps are the right idea. I mean, sounds like you need like. leaders that are more concerned about the well-being of your people rather than their own agendas. Um, well, you founded the Unbrewed for all the exiles. We wouldn't be able to survive without her, so we we actually owe her a lot. Um, and we might have been able to work out our differences given the right situation, but ever since we discovered that uh, crashed spaceship in the mid zone, that seems to be the grand prize. Whoever controls the outer junk fields controls that ship. So there's no negotiating past that point. Is it a so you're all fighting it... over some old wrecked hunk of junk? Yeah. That's more than a hunk of junk. This thing was in pretty, pretty good condition for considering, like, all the junk that's surrounding it. Um, a few of my goblin friends went in there to, uh, to explore. Uh, I think they set off some security systems because, you know, they didn't come back. They're dead. They're blown up. But, um, it put up a sort of force field around the ship so none of us can get in. So basically where you know, the question goes, and basically two, two sides are fighting now to see who gets rights to this ship and who can open it up first. Can I use like a, some sort of knowledge base check, maybe engineering, uh, to see if I can know of any way of turning off a shield from the outside. <laughs> sure. Give me a... Uh, uh, computers? Engineering? I'll take engineering. Engineering, because computers, you actually have to hook up to it. So. Yeah. Uh, 29. <laughs> Merc looks at you and go, wow, you're like a walking pilot. Oh, oh, you're not bolts, never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm it, down here. Yeah, I was thinking of... I, I was looking at the other guys. Wow, you're even smaller than me. Um... <laughs> You think, given a powerful enough EMP, it could work. Ah, so, if it's shielded, then pretty much it's going to be very hard to get into it unless you can sort of, like, whittle down the shield. But if it's, like, a working ship, I mean, that thing's got to work in the, you know, space. It's got radiation and micrometeorites. But if you got to figure out a way to get rid of it, electromagnetic pulse. Never go wrong. Merc gives you a blank stare. Stare. He goes, what, okay. you think I'm an idiot? Of course I know that. In fact, I have a way of building one so we can get in there. Quest kind of narrows his eyes and goes, Why do you say you're here again? I, I did. Yeah, you did. You said you were. Scavengers. What? I, I go back to my telepathy mode. Um, well, why did we? Why did I say we were here? We're ju okay. In telepathy, we're we're junkers. We're here to look for valuable scrap to sell. We're junkers. We're here to. No, wait a second. I go back to the. Telepathy. They're gonna think we're gonna take the ship. I mean, honestly, I'm already considering what the odds are that this is the same ship we're after. And while the odds should be like 1%, I feel like they're, it's actually going to be like 99%. But yeah. we don't know, we don't know it's the same ship. They don't know we're after after their ship. And we d right in right now, we don't know anything about the ship. So, j so just st just stay friendly and uh, mo and mostly honest. Don't tell them we're after a ship. We are t we are truthfully here for junk. And if they just and. If they just think we're here for junk, we can carry back. That's fine. That's fine. If we ha if it turns out to be the same ship, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it and try and try to hopefully maintain a um, favorable relationship with them. So okay, after a solid thirty seconds, hijack. Yeah, is staring blankly into space. <laughs> Does anyone else want to say anything as he's receiving this telepathic message? <laughs> I was just curious about, you know, learning about this area. I really think that maybe we could help sort things out between your leaders. Well, that 
Well, I mean, I don't know why you're so concerned about what's going on between our gangs here, but, um, you know, there might be a good opportunity. I think, I think they're both beyond reasoning, if you ask me. Saying, but Merc, um, interjects and goes, Hey, Quash, these guys seem, these guys seem pretty strong. Uh, maybe they can help us, uh, find the components I need. For my EMP key. At that point, Kaijak says, "Okay, uh, we're here for junk. We're junk people looking for junk." I look around and notice that they were talking to each other while I was sending <laughs> a telepathic message. <laughs> so, Let me Wolf ask just visit. Wolf just face palms at this moment. <laughs> so you got the technology to build the EMP. I'd definitely be willing to help you out with that. Potential. I'm sure these guys would too. Same, uh, well, I mean, I could build it if I had the parts. The two of you could use that as leverage to try to convince your leaders to stop fighting. If you have the way in and you have a guaranteed way in and both of you came together to do it, maybe it would show them that you guys are stronger working together rather than at each other's throats. Quesh goes, or that'll be a good distraction. While they're negotiating, he puts up finger quotes. Um, once your key is completed, we can um, disable the force force field of the stellar f of the uh, of the spaceship, and then we need to worry about all the the winning side. Well, I mean, if we fly field. the spaceship away. Then oh no, that thing's crashed. It's not going working. anywhere. Oh, never mind. Yeah, never I. Mind. <laughs> all the ships around here are pretty old, but I don't think it, I don't think any of them are going to are going to fly again without having like half the ship replaced. I, mean, I, can, I can show you. You want to see? If you agree to help us. Yeah, it's not far from here. It's in the mid zone, but it's pretty. It hasn't been a conflict in a few days. I think we should be able to take a quick quick mm -hmm. sneak peek. I got okay. no problem helping as long as you two try your best to sort things out and see if you could somehow convince your leaders to at least agree to a talk. I think we've... Yeah, first thing you get the EMP key completed first because the question's right, that'd be a good uh, a distraction, a peaceful distraction. The explosions. Yeah, e EMP well, won't hurt anybody unless they're robots or have pacemakers, uh, maybe androids or cyber or cybernetic implants like like half the population has. We, yeah. um, what's the what's the range going to be of this blast? We're not going to accidentally hurt anyone, are we? Hey guys, no, it, it's just enough to bring down the force field. Okay, that's good. Bolts, you stay back when it goes off. Um. You got Alt. it. Alt. You got Alt. it. Ah. And he sits up from his hunk of junk. <laughs> Trick to you. Oh, I was looking at the wrong one. I was looking like it was. I was over here. Ah, you just appeared right behind me. So, <laughs> it's like, what do you say? Help us out. Say it up. What? 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 What do you need? Where do you need us to go and get things to help you out? Like how much? How much danger? How how much? How like how much danger are we talking to? Like from winding up dead to super dead. <laughs> they both look at each other. Go. You know, mm. Mark goes uh, 12, 13, I don't know. So yeah. Listen, I'll explain once we get there. Um, and they start walking off um, in the direction of the stellar flare. Of where your uh your sig you know like the signal originates, yeah. <clears throat> and indeed, they are talking uh, so, about the same ship. So ment mentally to Kaijack, ah, uh, crab biscuits. Uh, I we're gonna have to kill these guys. The odd the odd the odds of this the odds of, of uh, being the same ship are extremely low, but of course it is, of, and yeah. of course I was right to think it would be. <laughs> If, I mean, if the shield is still working on it, well, what if what if the whole ship actually is working? You know. So, um, 
Sounds doubtful, but my main concern is how are we going to get what we need from the ship without upset, without upsetting these two? Right. Or maybe it fell on top of the thing, on top of the signal. The ship's just on top of it. So working Quick question, question: What do we need to actually bring back from the ship? Um, <clears throat> the uh. Scientific the notes about the scientific experiments of the uh, of the yeah. uh, rift battery. So, are we like going to be bringing back a hard drive? Could this be something that we could make a copy of, or like what do we physically have to I, get I, I, carry back from? I'll the have ship? to look it up, but it it's going to have to be like the engine. So it's it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, just we'll cross that bridge when we get there. You have to secure the the stellar flare first and make sure no one's gonna. <laughs> Like, get there. Like, you know, you have to make sure it's safe. Yeah, I suppose we can help, but we are we are looking for junk too. If if we help with the ship, would you mind? Would you mind if we took took some of the salvage from it? Obviously, obviously, we're not. Uh, obviously, you would keep the you would keep the majority, but you know, just just so, something something to something to pay us for the work we're doing and make our time having come out here not a complete waste which would be which is our fault not yours that we thought we would find more here yeah, it's only fair if you can get some salvaging rights yeah we can share it with you we're all friends okay. yeah all right i think it's a fair deal then we'll we'll help you out um yeah so it's a uh, probably like a medium size uh science vessel in pretty good condition um, considering how old and apparently it's a it's like violent crash um, and uh, you know Merc throws a rock into uh, at it in like a shimmering force field like mm -hmm. he goes ah, I love doing that he throws another rock you uh, go stop there you'll attract attention I'll do a quick scout looking around Anybody? Anything? Yeah, there, there's there's no sign of everyone. So we can't linger around too too long, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know when someone's gonna come up. Like, so, wanna, get, wanna help us? This is in surprisingly better condition than what I would thought than what I thought I would find here. Yeah, I'm in. Tell me, I of course I can't speak I can't speak for every everyone in the group, but. I'm ready. I'm ready. Tell me what you need, and I'll and I'll get the part for that EMP thing. Is ever is everyone else good with that? Or yeah, sounds like yeah. a plan to me. Definitely. Yeah, so. Unless anybody else knows how to make an EMP, I mean, I might. But is there any like terminal that can be reached that could be interfaced with that? That maybe force field is the... surrounding the craft. Uh, bleh, 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 bleh. Yeah. Um, it's in their terminals. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like this one. So I don't want to do the voice anymore because my throat's hurting. But she says <laughs> um, she needs three pieces of scrap to finish her EMP key. A electronic capaci capacitator. A size 23 harmonic coil. And a plasma charger circuit. Where are we gonna find scrap? <laughs> In a place like this. That's literally the easiest oh, thing on the list to find. <laughs> well, you have to find uh, these very, <laughs> very specific pieces of scrap. Yeah. So we have literally just turned this into an actual gay episode of Junkyard Wars. <laughs> Who can kill the EMP? <laughs> So I look around in the immediate vicinity. Do I see those three things? Amazingly, no. Ah, it's like I solved the puzzle. Yeah. Cool. Any, it, again? any, any yeah, suggestions on where we should start looking for these things? Yep, I was going to paste the list. I'm copy and paste it here. So. Quest says 
that the coil uh, okay so the capac capacitor is located in trash hunter territory the goblins the coil is on unbrewed turf the lizards he goes be careful of the unbrewed we don't really take kindly to trespassers and um she says she once had a plasma charger unit um but he goes <clears throat> Um, I kind of lost it when, uh, I almost heroically defeated the golem. Um, but if you take it down, then, uh, you should be able to get it. It kind of absorbed into him. Uh, now, for the capacitor, I... do you need it discharged, or do you want to find one that still has the two? Because those are dangerous. You don't <laughs> discharge those, you can electrocute yourself. You gotta be careful. <laughs> Oh, I'm very careful, and he puts her nose, her finger back up her nose, but it goes, like, deeper this time, and she goes, ow! I imagine she's not just, she's not picking her nose, she just puts it there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, then. Um, I don't suppose there's anything we could say, wear, or do that would, that would convince your your two different factions that we are allies and that there's no need for bloodbath when we're searching in those areas. Look, if we, if we make this key and you undo the force field, they're both going to be on it before you know it. There's going to be a, a war in our hands. If we can negotiate a Just peace conference, he puts up his fingers, um, which hopefully, admittedly, I hope doesn't end in bloodshed. We can go and um, deactivate the force field, and hopefully you guys can uh, clean things up with uh, the leaders. Yeah, it sounds like something we could do. Hmm. Worth a shot. I'll do. I'll do my best to talk some sense into them, and I'm just thinking. I'm. I'm just thinking future. Okay, I'm good at diplomacy. Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. Don't roll a one. Yeah. <laughs> Mark mentions uh, that golem, though. I admit, it's pretty tough. Um, punches like a trunk, and it's immune to most magic. He goes, do any of you use magic? No, I don't. Just my magic personality. <laughs> and then, uh, he may stand a little bit more of a chance. Okay, I don't... My my draconic power over the stars is technically not ma is technically not magic, despite it being supernatural in nature. Don't think too hard about how that works. What the heck are you talking about? You're talking nonsense uh, words. Oh, uh, well, basically, I can... I can do this. I, sum I summon my calls real quick display. I can I can also I can also explode and create black holes, but doing either of those right here seems like it would be seems like it would be a bit a bit more trouble than it's worth. Your, it, well, seems like it would end poorly. Does your black hole explode make an EMP? No, it does not. I don't. Yeah. I prefer I prefer I prefer to you I prefer to use more of my star, uh, my star powered abilities than my gravity powered ones anyway. Um. <laughs> Quest kind of pipes in and goes, there might be someone who can help you. Yeah. Fight that fight that golem. There was a, a Vesk here. Arrived a few months ago named Zethelred. Saying a real real intense guy, but he kind of moved into the outer junk field. Everyone leaves him alone. But uh Oh. I thought you were gonna say Merc. I thought she almost had it last time. <laughs> but uh, this uh, this Vesk told our leaders that they'll he'll take care of the gob of the golem for for everyone. But um, uh, obviously he hasn't. So, but he may know a way to take it down. That's some uh, 
have some weapons to help you fight them. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, alright. What was his name again? It says his Zep name is... Zephelford. Zephelred. 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 Say, so, yeah, he's like a veteran in the, uh... Veteran from the war against the Pact Worlds. Became a big game hunter after the peace treaty. Huh. How old is he? <laughs> does he does he just hunt crap now? Maybe I read it wrong because that was a long time ago, right? <laughs> like the the, the, the Pact World he's War. A pack, he's a Pact War reenactor, yeah. veteran of that. <laughs> he probably it he was probably active in the Swarm Wars, which is okay. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Oh, okay, I have to yeah, go look up the timeline again. Yeah, because that's one of the peace. But it was some. Happened. It's the reason. But those are actually the reasons we have peace between the pack worlds and the best, because we were basically both re required to. The two were basically required to team up to to beat back the swarm. Yeah. Maybe I can. Let's see your, uh... Oh, okay. He. I don't think he fought in it. He just like. He's kind of a, a military guy, and he just didn't really... He, uh... Didn't have a reason to fight anymore, basically, I think, so... Turns out we had a peace treaty, Yeah, and all that did was get rid of my job. Zethel Red was a best soldier who chafed under the peace treaty. He left the military and searched the galaxy for greater challenges. So... So if you're gonna go after that junk golem, I recommend finding him. Any idea where we might find him? He goes, absolutely. And uh, he gives you directions to all three of, all four of these locations. Uh, there, there's no maps I can really show you. But... Yeah. I feel like we should save the junk golem for last. That sounds like it's going to be the most challenging to me. And we might want to say, take a day to rest and prepare for it before we go, before we go straight into battle with it. You can, use this, you can use this opportunity to heal your stamina points if you want, but it, it, if you want. Yeah, I've been putting off spin resolve point because I still have over half of them left, and I don't know how long. I don't know. I don't know how many times I'm gonna have to spin resolve points right now because I don't know when we'll be able to actually get proper rest. Mm -hmm. Um. So I know we started a little late, but it is getting close. A little close to 12, and this is kind of a good stopping point, so... Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yep. And, uh... Yeah. In the meantime, throughout the week, we can decide what we want to go after first. Yep, yeah, just let me know which, uh... Because you can probably do a probably all of them in one session. Um, the golem is going to be a, a big class. one, obviously. But, yep, so you can decide to go to the Unbrewed Territory or the uh, Trash Hunter Territory first. Or, um, a talk to the Vesk if you want. Or we split up. There's four of us in four places we need to go. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> perfect, perfect idea. <laughs> no, no, Kydrick, I don't want you go. I don't want you going alone. I worry something will happen to you. Oh, don't worry. What's going to happen? A All right. So this is the plan. Bolts goes and flirts with the trash golem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The move? You have a lot of junk in your trunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What if what if Fultz, you you do your 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 Heidi turn into junk act, and when he absorbs you, that's when you spring the trap. That could work. What what if that kills Bolts though? What? Like we don't know how how does his absorb works? Is he is it going to crush Bolts alive if he gets absorbed, or is he just, or is his entire body just going to be floating down in there? Will he be disassembled? Like we don't. We know we get parts to, out of it, but we don't know the. the he has to spring the trap first, so that doesn't happen. Yeah, doesn't happen. yeah, but what I'm saying is, we do not know if he will have time to spring the trap before. In time, I'm. If Bolts wants to do it, we can do it. But I'm just saying that I would hesitate. I am hesitant to put any to put in, to especially Kaijack, but all of you to put any of you in significant danger unless it without knowing we shouldn't what the, what the risks actually are 
is leap before we look. Um, they do say, if, um, if what you're saying is you want to surprise attack this golem with one of you, um, yeah, not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna require you all to ring a bell. <laughs> it was more have one get have one get absorbed and then attack the golem from the inside and then and then three of us attack it from the outside. Well, I mean, I, I wasn't thinking about that third, that last part, just the, the absorb thing, because honestly, I think it would have been cool to watch. <laughs> oh, we're okay. Well, I would. I thought it was be. I thought it was going to be. <laughs> would there be combat? Penal like shooting penalties if I'm inside of. Listen, I'm thinking about it. how that would work. <laughs> so you probably have squeezing. You probably have squeezing penalties, which suck, and those are one of the main so, reasons. Technically, I, I think it can be medium sized. I mean, honestly, it wouldn't work because you're not actually junk. Yeah. No, but fair enough. To be drunk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, you need to have a higher opinion of yourself. You're not junk. <laughs> <laughs> GM confirmed. <laughs> you're, not you're, you're antiques. I would, vintage. I would go with vintage. Vintage, yeah. Also, you were wondering what this big robot was on the front page. That's the golem. That's the golem. Oh. oh. I thought it was one of those elite geth, but get one of those elite silver geth, but it's actually just a golem. Oh, that's why uh, there's a bunch of gobos and red guys. All yep, they're all throwing on. Father, <laughs> I'm gonna guess the Vesk attacking the golem is the one we need to talk to. Oh, uh, that's actually one of the um, iconic characters. Um, oh, oh I am wrong. I don't know their name, but uh, yeah, like of um, each adventure, um, they pick like like each class has a character associated with it, like in the manuals and uh, all the artwork and stuff. And every adventure, they kind of choose a adventuring party to put in all the artwork. Um, yeah, I f when you when you join one shots for for free RPG day, you usually play for Starfinder Pathfinder. You usually play as one of the iconic characters. Yeah, there's a kind of a good one about with them in a bar that I like, but I don't know if there's a handout of them. So here it is. I'll show you in the uh, in the Discord. But that's where. We'll, we'll We'll call for tonight because I don't want to get involved right. in, a, in a big thing with only a little bit of time left. Yeah. Yeah. But like there's a, one of there the bars is. on Kevin Depot. So you see the lizard there and then the, uh, I forget the mantis lady and then the big bug and the, uh, the, the mouse, the, the rat. And then there's a drone. Yep. What's it doing? Oh, thanks, Joey. Thanks fun. for running. Oh, yep. Definitely a good time. Yeah. A lot of build up for next week. <laughs> Can't wait. Exciting. Exciting yep. stuff. <laughs> and again, I cannot stress enough how thankful I am to be included in this. Oh, yeah. No problem. Very glad to have you. Of course. Yeah. It's awesome. You guys yeah. are great. Yeah. Also, it is also nice to have somebody who's an encyclopedia on the game. <laughs> <laughs> for so sure. Fun and useful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Um, well, yeah, thank yeah, you, Joey. Yep. Yeah. And um, good night, Boom's audience. Yeah, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Audience. Was there any messages? Oh, God, we moved. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Why is everyone so big now? <laughs> <laughs> Making you fit a little better. Are you all bigger oh, or am I smaller? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Good night, everyone. Space is all weird. Have all a right. good night, everyone. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>